Okay, we're back on the Amiga 1200 net case. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. Uh, I think it means Rising Sun. It means Rising Sun, apparently, according to Wikipedia, anyway. So, this is the, the new replacement case. And don't get too excited because it's not built yet. But this is one thing I didn't check. I didn't do the Cinderella test. And there we go, it definitely fits. It's definitely a Mega 1200 case because it fits my cover. So this is just gonna be an overview of me just having a bit more of a good look at it before I build it. Because once I've built it, it's built and you won't be able to see all the insides of it. So um, I had a bit of an issue opening this because the middle screw was bent, but it hasn't really done any harm. Um, a little bit of crack in the pillar there, but other than that, it's fine. I mean, that's the inside the case. All the screw holes have these, these uh, metal inserts, every single one of them. Well, for the case at least, anyway. Right, so that's that. And I tell you what, this goes back together so easily. You basically just put it on like that. That's it. That's in now. There's no messing around with clips. That is in. Easy as that. You just place it on it. And it's in. Nice and easy. So basically, yeah, I've got no issues with this now. It all seems to be fine, it's all solid. Slight issue with the screw, but it's done no damage. And yeah, so this is it. Now I did do a little bit of research on it this time, which I should probably should have done the first time. Um, all these names, they're actually uh, notable Amiga, Amiga people, basically people that are, I guess, well known in Amiga circles. So that's that's where that's come from. And I guess it's a bit of an homage to the Amiga 1000 case where, where all the people involved and I think a dog all signed it. So that's what that's all about. Right, there's one thing I didn't do um, on the initial unboxing as well was properly compare the back ports because I have noticed a bit of a difference, at least on my 1200. All these ports are exactly the same as the Amiga the Amiga 1200, apart from this one, the modulator one. Um, on the 1200, it doesn't have these bits either side, like I guess like the screw hole parts or whatever they're supposed to be. So that this part here is actually quite a bit thinner. If you imagine the space, that space closed up, that is thinner. As I will show you now with the actual Amiga. So this one, we've just got the kind of oval and there's a bit of a thicker space there. Well, there's this one, it's a bit difficult to show there, but you can just about see there, it is actually a different shape. So yeah, hopefully that won't break through there because it's quite close, but that's the only real, the only real difference I've noticed. Right, so I'll just try and show these back ports. It's not the best way to do this, but they are all there and they do all seem to line up. It's just that one modulator one, which does seem to be a bit different. I guess maybe the idea of that is, I think some people actually take the modulator out of these. I have seen, I have seen somebody who's done that. They've taken the modulator out and they've run their graphics ca um, cable through there. So maybe that's the idea of that. I mean, I know they, they did say that they've made kind of quality of life improvements to these cases. So thinking about it, that's probably why it's like that. It's probably so you can actually put a, a, a different cable through there 
if you take the modulator off the Amiga 1200 board because who needs the modulator now anyway? So this is the top of the Amiga 1200 case and this is obviously the new one so we've got the same same size cut out for the badge and it is basically identical um, yeah it is pretty much identical there's no obvious there's no, no obvious signs on the outside that this is anything different than a standard Amiga case all right so we've seen the top let's have a look at the bottom and see how that compares Right, so that's the bottom of my original Amiga 1200, obviously with the uh, 3D printed trapdoor. And this is the replacement one. So, well, the, the screws actually line up differently by the looks of it, the actual case screws, but as long as it's just the case screws, I suppose it doesn't matter. The central one's obviously central, but the others don't actually line up in the same place. So that's a difference, not that it matters because it isn't the same case. So that's, that's the original and that's the new one. So we've got these rubber feet rather than those. Obviously the trap door is vented now. Case badge is pretty much where it was on the other one. Um, And the screw hose, I think these, I don't know if these actually hold the motherboard in or if they are just extra case ones. I'll see when I put it together. We've got the, the screw hole there and there, which I obviously lost the screws for. But we do have those screws, those screw holes here and here. And I have got, there are two, two screws in the packaging. So maybe that's what they're for. But yeah, that's basically just comparing the top and bottom case now. And they're very similar. And I think the only differences are really just, just how the, uh, the new case is made to make it a bit easier to put together. So as I've said before, this is a doddle to take apart. It just lifts off. There's no plastic tabs you've got to worry about. Nothing like that. Now what you do have in this case, they've designed it to take various modern, uh, either like system on the chips like Raspberry Pis or the Mr. board that I don't know a whole lot about. There's a Kira, which I believe is like an adapter to use, I think, it's, is it the Amiga keyboard with a with a Raspberry Pi, something like that. Um, and there's, there's actually all the fittings on here to do it. So this is one of my Raspberry Pis here. This is a Raspberry Pi 4. And I'll just kind of show where this is supposed to sit. Now we've got four screws holding this into the case that I've got for it. And right there we have screws on the board and basically it sits on those. Obviously this is in a case but for the magic of Affinity Fobo, I will show you how it should look when it sits in there, but basically that sits about there. It sits about there and they actually give you some risers to mount it on. So in this bag here, I think there's about eight or ten of these risers. There's two screws. Um, so you would basically get four of these and I think you would just put one on each of these hose like that. I think you might have to supply your own screws for this though because I, don't, I don't, didn't see any but basically there's two screws in there then there's a case screws that's it. So um, yeah basically that is going to sit pretty much like that. That's going to sit on on those risers obviously I've got it in my in my case here but if you want if you want to mount the pie um, directly into the board you won't have all this around it it will just sit there and I think they've designed it so all the ports are easily accessible 
also they've got a hose basically um, placed for the, the mist award. Now, I don't really know a whole lot about that, to be honest. I've heard of it in, in relation to like FPGA. I guess that's what it is. Um, but there are mounts for that here. Um, yeah, the case is basically set up for that. And you can also mount the Kira back here, just back here, I think it sits. And I think the idea is um, the, the, the connectors will come out through the, some of these holes here if you if you go that way. So I guess you could have the Raspberry Pi, the Kira, or the Mister, the Kira. Um, that's the case is actually designed to to take all that. So you're not you're not having to having to find ways of mounting it like you would have to in an original case. So all these extra holes you see, they do all have a purpose and they're there to help you build your Amiga, basically how you want to build it. If you want to put an actual Amiga in there, Amiga 1200 board, you can. If you want to build a Pi, because you just can't get hold of an Amiga 1200 or you want something modern. Or if you want to put, I guess, the, the 1200NG, I'm sure it's probably designed to take something like that as well. So there are, it, it is designed to be modded basically. It's got everything ready there for you, kind of in the best position for it. So the, uh, the Raspberry Pi sits about there, the Mister sits about there, the key rods about there. There's something else as well that they've designed for these cases. Um, I've, I've seen many pictures of these, these cases because I've been thinking about buying these for a while. And right about here, there's a lighter area and I thought maybe it was like a manufacturing thing. I did I did wonder whether it should possibly be for some sort of display under it as well. And what you see there, um, basically that is for, if you have a GoTek, or a floppy drive emulator, I don't know if they're all GoTeks, but basically if you've got a GoTek with a screen, um, you can just see these, these screw holes underneath. They've designed it so you can mount the LCD so I guess the idea is you can see it, see the display through the case. That's why the case is thinner there. So those hose we have there, these hose, these are for mounting the LCD board. So, so basically they have pretty much thought of as much as they possibly can to help people build these Amigas the, the way people want to build them and have everything just there ready for people. So you can tell the people that, that have designed these know their Amigas, they know what people do with them, um, and they've designed it to, just to help us all out, basically. Now, fairly recently, I discovered this magazine when I was just, just out shopping a while back. I didn't even know anyone was doing Amiga magazines, but that's another story. But one thing I've noticed in this one, while reading through this the other night, is there something called a Bifrost Heimdall edition? And what that actually is, is some fancy uh, LED lights, like programmable lights you can actually put into your Amiga. I'm not planning on doing that just yet, because that's like another, I think it's something like another 55 pounds, something like that. But that is something else you can do with these. I'm assuming it would probably fit these cases as well. I can't say for certain, but yeah, I just thought I'd show that because while we're modding cases, why not see how far we can go? I mean, that almost looks like it's a bit like Kit from Knight Rider. That'd be quite cool. I'm not sure I'd want to pay that amount of money for it, but if you run out of things to mod, mod on your Amiga and you want to keep going, it's something. And while we're on the subject of these Amiga Addict magazines, um, I bought some back issues because I just like the look of that cover. I mean, look at all those old Amiga cases uh, packaging, and it's got this article in. It's got an article about about these, not this particular one, but about one from the Amiga 500. I've not actually read this one yet because I, I actually bought a, I bought half a dozen of these um, these issues quite recently, and I'm, and I'm working my way through them, but. I don't have any association with this magazine, by the way. It's just something I found and I thought, wow. Yeah, 
you can buy an Amiga magazine in 2025. And it actually had these cases in, not this case, but yeah. One thing I didn't really show that closely um, in the other video was these pieces that you get inside it. I, I kind of did, but um, I mean, these are your back plates. If you've got, if you're using them for VGA or DVI, um, yeah, that, that's a floppy button. This is the this is the case badge they give you. I guess they don't fit it to the case just in case you want to put your own on or put one on that says Commodore. Is that there's actually a bit more to this weight wise and it feels a lot it feels heavier than it should do this. I guess it's like a it's metal with with the um, the print on it. It's it's kind of raised as well. But that obviously that obviously fits in right there. Now whether you want it to be an Amiga or an what that says, I guess that's down to personal preference. But that was that. These are my case screws, we won't talk about them anymore. These are, there's two, four, six, eight, there's about 10 risers in there and two screws. Um, the screws, I think they may be for possibly connecting the motherboard. The risers might be, maybe the motherboard will sit on the risers or maybe they're just there for mounting these, you know, the Raspberry Pi, the Mister, etc. But that all kind of makes sense. What doesn't make sense to me at the moment is what these are for. So if anyone knows, if they found out, because on here, I'll try and focus somehow. I don't know if you, I don't know if you can see this, but there, there are on this piece of paper, there's one, two, three bigger circles and two smaller ones. And I can't really see anything that they marry up to on the case. And also this one, this one has a, a small cutout there. So I don't know if it's the cutout bit we're supposed to want or the big piece left over. But I can't actually see, I can't see inside or out laying this on top what, what they are supposed to be for. So yeah, I've got no idea. That's a bit. That's a bit of a mystery. There wasn't really anything, any kind of assembly guide or anything inside. I guess they know that people like us learn by doing. So, yeah, that was just the one thing I didn't show too too detailed. So, yeah, that's pretty much everything now. So I think I've pretty much shown everything I can now, apart from me actually building it. So that will be the next stage. I'm not going to keep milking this with video after video after video. So now, for the moment, I'm going to have to put this away. But, but the next step will actually be building it. And that shouldn't be too far off now. Unfortunately, I've got this day job I have to go to during the day for a couple more days. But by the weekend, we should actually have an Amiga inside this case. <laughs>